Hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today I'm taking a look at a small bluffing card game from Yellow. This is Nessos. In this game, the players are going to be offering each other cards face down and saying what that card is. They could be telling the truth, they could be lying, and then it's up to that player to either accept that or give it back to that player with maybe a couple of twists. We've seen these ideas before in many, many games. So, does this one add anything new? Are those twists I'm talking about enough to make this stand out from that crowd? Well, let's find out. And then we'll come on back and I'll tell you what I think of it. In the game, you're trying to get to a certain number of victory points in front of you or just bust every other player out of the game and therefore win the round, all right? So in a game with four players here, we've removed a few cards from the deck, we've shuffled it up, dealt everybody five, we are going to be attempting to get to 40 points. Someone is given the star player token here, and then you are going to take a look at your hand, and you are going to offer someone else one card. Now these come in two different kinds. You have the ones that have a creature, and they have a number. So you have a two there, we have here an eight, and then you have these cards, which are, as you can tell, don't have a number and are, are bad. So these are the evil cards. And so I am going to offer someone else a card. I might give them a card like so and say the number on it. This is a two, and give it to them. Here's the thing. If it's a actually a number card, I cannot lie about the number it is. If it is a, one of the green cards, then of course I can say whatever I want to. That's the thing. So if I'm offering this card and I say two, it's either a green card or a two. There's no other possibility of what it could be. Now that player has three different options. They can say, fine, I'll take it. They flip it. They keep it in front of them. Great. It is a two. And then I would just replenish a card and pass this over to the next player so they'll, so they'll be the start player. Second option. They can just pass it back to me and say, nope, you take it. And I would flip it, replenish a card again, pass this over. The third option is they can add a card from their hand themselves and say, okay, fine, that's a two. Well, that's a five, and I'm going to offer this to this player. And that player now has the same three options. So that player could keep them, give them back to the player they came from, or add a card themselves. All right, fine, so that was a two you said, that was a three you said, and that's another two, and I'm going to offer them over here. And this player now only has one of, the, one of the two first options. They can keep it, or they can force the last player to take it. They're going to go ahead and keep it. They got a two, they got another two, and one of the players, the one who said the three, that player, was indeed lying. So that's what I've got. This goes over here. Everybody who played one must draw back up to five. And now this player will do the same thing. This player is going to say, okay, I'm going to give you a seven. This one's not sure if they, uh, you know, they're being targeted to try to bust them or if it actually is a seven and that player wants it back, maybe. So they are going to say, okay, fine, it's a seven. I'm going to add a card and pass it over here. That player will take them. Look at that, it was a seven. And then we'll draw, draw. This passes to the next player. That's it. We just keep doing this until a couple, one of, a couple of things happens, okay? First of all, Someone gets to 40 points. That's for four players. If someone gets to 40 points, they'll just win the game outright. Second thing that could happen is we have displayed nine of these bad cards. At that point, round is over, and whoever has the highest total is going to be the winner. And then lastly, if everyone has bust out because they took three of these, and only you are standing, then you just win the game. That's all there is to it. So let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. All right, so there it is. Let's talk about it, okay? I'm going to start with thematic ties. Is the theme interesting, well-implemented? Does it help teach the game? Uh, the theme here is definitely pasted on. It could have been anything, and I actually don't think it helps teach whatsoever. It does not make a whole lot of sense why we are offering each other these, you know, mythical creatures. Um, so, no, I don't think the theme helps teach or even uh, attempt to help teach the game. Aesthetics, component quality, artwork, things like that. I think the artwork is fantastic. I'm a big fan of it. It looks uh, stark, beautiful, really like that. As far as the components go, the cards are okay quality. And unfortunately, they do have a black border. They're black bordered cards, which means they're going to start showing wear around those black borders pretty quickly. That's unfortunate for a game that's going to be handled this much. The cards are going to be shuffled quite a bit. You're going to be passing them around quite a bit. So... 
not great. I, I'm not super thrilled with that. I, I wish the cards were uh, white bordered cards. Quality, honestly, is not that bad. I think if they weigh, if they were white bordered cards, it would not show as much, and I wouldn't even think of it. But already, I'm starting to see a little wear and tear on the edges, so not great. Uh, replayability: Does the game scale well, and does it give you new things to discover from session to session? I think it scales just fine. I don't have a problem with that. I don't think there's a lot of replayability here, though. Once you've played the game once, you've seen everything it has to offer. And so there are no surprises. It's all about the bluffing aspect of the game. Do you really adore that? Then cool, I think you're going to enjoy this. But there is nothing else that is game-driven that is going to be new, okay? This is a game that's very much about the players. So you have to decide if that's something you are uh, interested in. Game length. Does it stay interesting the whole time? Does it get repetitive? Anything like that? I think it's fine. The box lists 20 minutes. It might be a little longer than that, depending on the number of players. But for the most part, it's a short game. It, it's a filler, and it knows it, and it does that well. That's fine. Ease of play. Is it fiddly? Are there any extraneous rules? Anything like that? There are two things uh, I want to talk about here. So the first one is the 1, 2, 3. If you have a 1, a 2, and a 3, you get a bonus 10 points. That's... I know that's like an extra rule that I do like because the one, the two, and the three are usually, you know, they're so small that it, they would be so, sort of worthless otherwise. So I like that rule. That's a little extra thing they've added that I do enjoy. I also like the idea of not being able to lie about every single card. You can only lie about the green ones. If it's a number card, you have to tell me what number it is. I like that. However, uh, this one is mathier than a lot of the other games of its ilk, you know. A lot of these other games where I pass you something, I tell you what it is, am I telling the truth or am I lying? That's the game. Here, same deal. A lot of those games don't have a lot of math. This one does. I need to keep track of my entire tableau and count up to, you know, 40 sometimes, right? I wish that they would have included a couple of cards per player that you can use as score markers. Just one card. Other games have done this. One card that lists 1 through 9. The other one has 10, 20, 30, 40. And you can just slide one card on top of the other one. So that I can quickly look around the table and say, okay, you've got 28, you've got 32, and you've got 17. I'm going to offer you this card. You know, to target someone. Oh, yeah, you've got, you know, 32, but you've also got three of the bad cards. Well, here you go. Here's an 8. That either wins you the game or you lose it. You know, I'm forcing you to probably pass that on or really take a big risk. I just want to be able to count the amounts quickly. And so uh, that's a missed opportunity, I feel. Lastly, tactics and strategies. Are too lucky of their interesting choices. There's not a whole lot in this game. It's a tiny design. You know, it is a game in which, again, the entire essence of the game is here's something, yes or no. That's it. It's been done before, probably most famously by Cockroach Poker, a very well-known little card game. In that one, you can lie about everything, and um, there is no math at all. You are just taking, you know, if you take a certain number of uh, some cards, you're, you're done, right? You're eliminated from that game. Now, in that game, you have a single loser and everyone else is a winner. In this game, you do have one winner. I like some of those things better than the others. You know, I like a single winner. I like uh, not having the possibility to lie on every single card. You have to tell the truth sometimes. You're going to probably have to lie sometimes. So I like all of those things. The math, though, and no way to track it, uh, that's that's not great. And so that hurts the uh, just the, the, the strategizing for me a little bit. You know, the, uh, the uh, ability to manipulate the game to do what I want it to do for me. But overall, it's a very small sort of sphere of, of choices, really, you know. Overall, I think it's a nice design. I think it's, uh, for the most part, well-made. But it really doesn't bring anything new to the table. You've probably played a game like this by now. Uh, if you haven't, maybe this is one you want. And maybe this one looks better to you than something like Cockroach Poker. I like it myself. I think it's fun. I like the, the look. I like the... The package overall, you know, I, I do enjoy it. I do wish there was a way to track scores, though, just to make it more of a filler, less annoying to have to keep going back and saying, how much do you have again? And that's compounded with more players. So overall, not bad. I enjoyed my plays of it. It's one that I could certainly see myself playing again if someone else wants to, you know, bring it out and play it. I have no problem with it whatsoever. 
but it's also it feels a little late to the party in some ways you know um not too original really so there you go that is nestle's uh, nice little card game check it out if it sounds like it's uh up your alley but other than that i'm done here i'm z garcia thanks for checking this out with me i'll see you on the next one Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.